Number 37. Complete and balance each of the following half reactions, which is step two through five in the half reaction method. We have letter D here. We need to balance H2O liquid, which yields O2 gas, and it's in an acidic solution. So I wrote down all of the steps in which you have to balance a redox reaction in an acidic solution. So there's a couple of things, guys. One, just memorize this flow, okay? As you do more practice with balancing redox reactions, you're going to be seeing that you're going to do the same steps over and over and over again. So it's just easier to just memorize the flow and what comes next, okay? Don't be switching around these numbers, okay? Because it's not going to really work, okay? So that's the one thing. Um, and two, we only have to do steps two through five here is because this is a half reaction. All I, I gave you all of these steps if we had to do a full blown, uh, redox reaction and that's coming up later. All right. So stick around <laughs> for those bad boys. But in this case, let's just balance this one. Okay. So we have H2O and that's a liquid and that yields O2. And that's a gas. Okay. So let's go. And actually this is, this is not centered. So my brain is like, please center it. Okay. There we go. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So we don't have to do step one because this is a already a half reaction. So no need there. Step two, we need to balance all elements except for hydrogen and oxygen. So I look for all the elements, all the elements on the periodic table that are not hydrogen and that are not oxygen. But however, I only have hydrogen and I only have oxygen. So yeah, I, I can't do this step. Not that I can't do it, but I'm going to skip it. I looked, I tried to do it, but there's no reason for me to do it. So I just skip over number two. Number three, the third step is always to balance oxygen and then hydrogen. So oxygen comes first. So we balance oxygen by adding H2O. Now in this case, we do have oxygens, right? I have an oxygen here on my left-hand side and I have an oxygen here. Let's take note as to how many we have. I only have one oxygen on my left side. I have H2O and I have two oxygens on the right side, right? I have this two here, so two. So you need to balance right? And you're always going to add water to the side that needs the oxygen, right? So how many waters do I have to add? Now, just think about it, right? For every one H2O, or actually I'll say it this way, I'll say for every one oxygen that you need, you're going to add one H2O. So if I need two oxygens, I'm going to add two H2Os. If I need three oxygens, I'll add three H2Os. But from one to two, it looks like I only need to add one more water, right? I need one more oxygen, so I'm going to add one water. So that's what I'm just going to say, plus H2O. And just know that when you add the water, that's in a liquid form. But now look at this. This is pretty interesting. I have water plus water. So how many waters do I have? You see how this is literally the same, right? literally the same compound. So I can just sum this up by saying, instead of H2O liquid plus H2O liquid, I can just say that I have now two H2O liquids. So that was pretty cool. Now I'm moving on to the fourth one. Now I'm going to balance those hydrogens by adding H plus. So let's see. How many hydrogens do I have on the left side? Well, I have two but now it's being multiplied by two, right? Two times two is four. So I have four hydrogens on my left side. And how many hydrogens do I have on my right side, on the product side? I have none. So I need to put some hydrogens on this side, right? I need to add four hydrogens. So I need to plus four H plus. You have to keep that plus there, right? And that's aqueous if we need the state. And now I have four hydrogens. So now that's good. So that step's balanced. Now I'm going to add electrons, which are E negative. Electrons are negative. 
to the more positive side. Now, this is pretty cool, right? Whenever you get to the electron stage, what I like to do is I just like to make a barrier between the reactants and the product side. Just makes it easier. So I just put a little break here. Okay. All, now all we have to do is just find out what the total charge is of the left side and of the right side. How are we going to do that? Well, we look at the overall charges. And the overall charges are always in the, the upper right-hand corner of each molecule or compound. So for example, for water, did you see a charge in the upper right-hand corner? No, I didn't see it. So if you don't see a charge, it's automatically a zero. It doesn't matter that I have two waters, right? Two times zero, and that's what you would do normally. You have to times those. But two times zero is still zero. So I have an overall zero charge on my reactant side. There's no other molecule or compound here, so I don't have to add anything. But now there's two molecules and, you know, or ions on my left side. Uh, sorry, on my right side. So I have to do each one. Let's work with oxygen first, O2. Did I see a charge in the upper right-hand corner? No. So what's the charge? Zero. I only have one of these. So one times zero is zero. But now I have to add that with this guy. Now in this case, there was a charge in the upper right-hand corner. It was a plus, but what number is that? It's a plus one. And I have four of these. So you have to multiply. So I have an overall charge of a plus four coming from the H pluses. Now I just add those two numbers together. Zero plus four is an overall plus four. And that's the charge that we look at. So I have an overall zero charge on my left side. I have an overall plus four on my right side. I'm always going to add those electrons to the more positive side. Out of zero and a plus four, the plus four is more positive. So I'm going to say plus E minus. But now the question is, how many electrons do I add? Do I add one? Do I add two? Do I add three? The answer is, how many numbers do I need to add, or, you know, negative numbers, to go from a four to a zero? Think about it in terms of a number line, right? I have to hop four times to get from a four to a zero. That's how many electrons you add. So I would add four electrons. And that's the end here, guys. We're finished with step five, and that's the end. So the answer would be two H2O liquid yields O2 gas plus four H plus, and that's aqueous, and then 4E minus. Your electrons don't have a state, so they just stay as 4E minus. But that's it. Guys, what'd you think? Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, that'd be awesome. Uh, if you want to like the video too, go right ahead. Thank you so much. Uh, and hopefully you're doing great in all your classes. I will see you guys all in the next lesson for some more redox fun. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. <laughs>